The FTSO system, which is an oracle for time series data, has produced amazing results in both quality of data and also decentralization, with currently up to 100 data providers contributing. But a few challenges have arisen which puts the harmonious data provider ecosystem at risk. While the risk of manipulation remains substantially low, it's the sustainability of this complex system that needs to be protected most. Some risk factors are shared algorithms between data providers, which begins to skew the data into a centralized direction, which can also draw rewards away from other fair playing data providers, which puts strain on their operating costs. There are robust solutions to this problem, such as introducing a stake in model where data providers must hold equity in the system and are at risk of being slashed for bad behavior. However, a temporary solution is required until we see a solution like this introduced. This has led to FIP02, a governance proposal being passed to introduce the FTSO management group to self-police the system. This gives a set of data providers the ability to vote and propose for another data provider to be removed who they believe should no longer be eligible to participate. The system works with a two strikes and you're out mechanism, whereby if a proposal is passed against a data provider, they will be chilled, meaning they'll be unable to participate for two reward epochs and therefore also unable to earn rewards. If proposed against a second time, they will be permanently blacklisted from participating with their address. The management group is composed of data providers who meet the following criteria. They must be actively participating and receiving rewards for the past 20 reward epochs, must not have been chilled in the past 20 reward epochs, and finally must not have been removed from the management group in the last seven days. The process starts by discovering social support for a proposal against a particular data provider, which is done via discussions in various social channels. This soon progresses to an official discussion on the Flare forum. This site is restricted to activity by only management group members and defendants. A post on this forum is made when there is enough evidence found and for other members to discuss and share their own evidence. This gives an opportunity for the defendant to defend against the accusations. After some time of discussion, a management group member will decide to either concede to the defendant or make an official proposal which is submitted on-chain. With a proposal submitted on-chain, it can be voted on over a 48-hour period by all eligible management group members casting a vote either in favour or against the proposal. With enough participation and votes in favour to meet both threshold and majority requirements, the proposal will be considered passed. If however these conditions have not been met, the proposal will be rejected and no further action will be taken. A past proposal will now be reviewed by the Flare Foundation, who must manually take the disciplinary action of chilling or blacklisting the accused data provider. Importantly, this does give the Flare Foundation an opportunity to veto any punishment, but this will only happen in exceptional circumstances. While all this is done by the FTSO management group, it is essential that delegators are aware of any proposals and their status. If a delegator is delegating tokens to a data provider who's had a proposal passed against them, the delegates will no longer earn tokens from that data provider while it's chilled or if it's completely removed. One way delegators can keep up to date on these proposals is by visiting flaremetrics.io to see a list of all proposals and their details. For a full technical description, you can read more in the Flare documentation.